Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, in today's lesson, what I'm going to show you how to do is to create a section view and add dimensions to that section view on a part called the drill block. So what I've done on the classroom is shared a file link to this drill block student version. So when you click on the link, it'll most likely take you to the drill block student version uh, document or file that uh, will, will need to be editing. However, what you need to do first is to create a copy of this because since I shared it with you, it's technically not yours and you can only view it. So the best way to do that is to come up to this, these three little lines here that say document menu. Click on that and then you're going to click where it says copy workspace. When you do that, uh, you'll notice uh, the document name will pop up and it'll say copy. What you want to do is take that copy out. And then you can call it drill block student version and then your last name. And then that will make it your own version. And then this will be the version that you will want to edit. So I'm going to right click and then select zoom to fit. And now we're ready to go ahead and start working on our drawing. Now, as usual, what we're going to do to start our drawing is come down here to the plus sign in the lower left hand corner, click on that once, and then we're going to select create drawing. Again, we'll be choosing an ANSI C inch. So that has been the drawing file we've been using for our previous drawing files and we'll continue to use that one. So we'll click on it once and then click OK. Let that load. Okay, now it should be referencing that part, uh, that drill block part that we just made a copy of, and now it should be your version of it. And so we're going to go ahead and select it. And again, it, the view orientation is the front, and we're going to change our view scale size to 1.5. Hit enter. Make sure you hit enter on the keyboard. And then it's going to put in that front view. And we're going to go ahead and place it in the bottom left by clicking left clicking once. And this time we're going to drag directly to the right. And that's going to put our right side view in. OK, now I am not going to put in a top view as we've done in our previous. Uh, this is where I'm going to place my section view. So uh, what I'm going to do first is uncheck projective view up on our menu bar up here on the top left to deselect projective view. And the first thing I'm going to do before I actually put in my section view is I want to show the hidden lines. And so on the right side view, obviously it looks pretty blank over here. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on the right side view. And then I'm going to go ahead and click show hidden lines. And then what that's doing is it's showing us those holes uh, that are placed on the drill block. But again, we can't see from the right side, which is the reason why we need a section view. So to create a section view, what we're going to do is go up to the toolbar at the top again. And we're going to choose this little icon here with the arrows kind of, and a squiggly line in between. And that is our section view button. Now, to create the section view, we are going to click on horizontal because we're going to want to cut the section in half, creating what's called a full section view and cutting it horizontally across. And it's really important that we come down here and we're looking for this little triangle and that's kind of the midpoint of our section view here. And we're going to go ahead and go all the way across, click a second time and then Notice that when I drag up, the holes are upside down. So to change that, we're just going to click on these little arrows in our section view box here, and that'll change the direction, and that will move it so that the holes are right side up. And then we'll just click in that space. Okay, and that will place in the section view uh, that we are looking for. So now we can see the holes and the different types of holes that we have here. So you can see we have some counterboard, countersink, through holes, uh, some blind holes and such. Uh, before I start dimensioning, I'm now going to place in my isometric view, just as we did before. And so now, again, I want to select projective view and then select my front view again. 
I'm going to place uh, down to the top. I'm going to move diagonally and click it to the top right corner. And again, you notice it's it's very large, so we obviously don't need that big of a space. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect projected view. Right click on the isometric view that I just placed in. And I'm going to click on view properties. And I'm going to change the scale size to one to one. Now I shrunk that down, hit the green check mark. And I can now kind of manipulate it and move it around as needed. Now I'm ready to start uh, working on my dimensions. And we're going to follow the same dimensioning reminders that we've done in the past. Okay, so we're going to focus on one dimension at a time. Uh, and then we will be selecting our baseline edge, counting how many dimensions we need, and adding some extra uh, dimensions for these holes here as well. All right, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is work on my size dimensions. So I'm going to use the dimension tool as usual. And I'm going to go ahead and select the height. So I'm going to use my right side edge to make it adjacent. And then I'm going to go ahead and place that in. All right, so now I've added my first dimension. And notice again that when I did that, uh, my dimension is very small. So let's go ahead and edit that now, and then we'll come back and add the rest of the dimensions. So I'm going to go ahead and click on dimension. Turn that off for a second or so. And then again, I'm going to come over here on the right hand side and select the wrench. And the wrench will open up our drawing properties. And I'm going to go ahead and select our dimension icon here. And the first thing I'm going to change is my text type and make that 0 0.250. Hit enter. And automatically you can see the two just increased its size. Okay, and that's all I'm going to add there. Now, since I already have it open, I also am going to add some, um, what's called a hole call out. So I'm gonna click on this A here for annotations. And I'm going to change a couple of these uh, dimension text heights as well uh, for the annotations. So we're gonna change the notes text height to 0.250. It's not going to change too much there. I'm going to change callouts. And then I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom and go to whole callouts. And that's going to be the important one 0 0.250. Enter. Okay. Now that I have those text sites uh, edited, I can go ahead and close my drawing properties for now and then go ahead and hit the wrench. Now, uh, I've already done the height, so let's work on the width. So I'm going to go ahead and select my dimension tool again. This time, I'm going to select the bottom edge of my front view and then drag it down. And then last but not least is my depth. And this time, I'm going to place my depth on the right side view. And remember, depth goes left to right on the right side view, and that's three. So in this case here, I went ahead and just did the overall size dimensions first for all three. I did the height, the width, and the depth. Now I'm going to go ahead and start marking in my other dimensions uh, and starting with the height. So the next edge that I need to dimension is going to be the center of my front view. But remember, I have some circles here. So I'm going to zoom in here. And then I'm going to use a tool called the center mark tool. And we've talked about center marks before because they mark the center of circles. And they are uh, details that we should put in or line conventions we should put into all drawings. So I'm going to click this tool here. So circle with the plus sign in the middle. And then I'm going to click on each circle. Okay. It doesn't matter if it's the outer or inner, you know, circle. It'll mark the center mark. And it adds in a plus sign. You can see that right there. Okay. And notice as I hover, it adds it in. Okay, so now they're little plus signs, and that's going to help us mark the centers of the circle. So again, zoom out a little bit. Now I'm going to hit the dimension tool. I'm going to click the bottom edge, and this time select the center, doesn't matter the circle, and drag to my right. And that's my other height dimension. 
Okay, so now I have the location of the height of those circles along with the overall size dimension of the height. Now I can start working on the width. And so again, what I need to do is find the location of the centers of those circles because that's obviously the detail that I need to know. I need to know where the circles are located. So this time I'm going to select uh, the left edge as my baseline. And then I'm going to do each center of the circle. So now I can zoom in again. And now drag down. Okay, so now I have the overall width, okay, and then the four centers of the circle. So I had five dimensions that I needed to mark for the width. Now for the depth, uh, there is really no other dimension that I need for the depth because I can't see the centers of the uh, or, or any of the details from the right side, okay? So now I... The last part is here is I need to mark the holes themselves, okay? Because the holes have details to them, okay? These are these are hole details, hole in and hole notes uh, that have been created to create these holes, and now I want to mark them. So now what I'm going to do, just kind of resize my screen here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the dimension tool, and this time I'm going to slide two down, and there is a button here called Hole Callout. Okay, it's the little symbol here at the top that has the diameter and the depth symbol right next to each other. So I'm going to click on that. And now what that's going to allow me to do is come down to my first hole and I'm going to add these dimensions to my section view. Okay, and so I can tell this is a section view because of these diagonal lines. These are hatch mark lines and they're telling me that this part is solid and I've cut this, uh, this figure, this drill block in half. And so now I want to mark uh, and, and I want to put the whole annotation and include the dimensions that go along with that. So now by selecting the whole callout and I click the top edge, now it's going to give me the total dimension of that whole annotation without me having to type it all out. Very simple way of doing it. And I'm going to do that for all four holes. Now the trick is you've got to kind of place these holes so that one, they don't overlap one another, but two are a little more spaced out, so they're not running into one another. So you might have to move them around after you place them in, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so there are four hole annotations, and I put two to the left here and two to the right. And you can see here that they're marking, you know, uh, for the second one here, you have a, a diameter of a 0.5 through with a countersink of one with an 82 degrees uh, here. And then uh, this other one has a diameter of 0.5 with a depth of two with a counterbore of 0.75 with a depth of five. This was just a through hole. And then again, another counterbore hole for the last one. And so this gives us a uh, much greater information about the hole. It's a little more clear than if we were trying to ju just dimension them from these holes here where we can't actually see what's going on on the inside of the part. And that's why uh, hole annotations and hole calls are a good way of showing and, and showing the manufacturer what the holes actually look like. Okay, so I'm going to right click and zoom to fit. And I'll resize it. And those are my basic dimensions that I would need in order to fully dimension this part. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and zoom in on my title block. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add in my title block here. And I'm going to call it drill block drawing and then hit the check mark and then right click one more time zoom to fit 
And that is how you do a section view with whole callout annotations for our lesson for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. I appreciate all your attention. Talk to you soon.